Hey everybody, welcome back. So I just got through reacting to Chantal, one of her lives, and I looked at the live that she just posted today, kind of going to leave that alone. She said it was a treadmill reveal, but it was more eating than anything else. She did show the treadmill, and I did some research on the treadmill, and also the Twitter peeps kind of outed the fact that the treadmill in question, it is not of quality. Uh, the treadmill that Chantal got, the max weight that it can handle is 286 pounds. And we know that she's well over that. She's well over the 500 pound range. So she got the wrong treadmill or Salah got the wrong treadmill. Maybe they both tried to go cheap and get the cheapest treadmill, but due to Chantal's excessive weight, you can't do that when you are of a bigger size. You have to get a treadmill or equipment that can handle weight properly. So there's that. So the treadmill that she's got, it'll probably break down within the first one or two tries of her using it. It's not gonna last very long. But aside from that, I wanna do something fun and I wanted to take a moment and react to Melissa Goltero because she posted a reading on Foodie about three days ago, uh, going further into her energy. What is Chantal's energy? What's going on with her? How long is this arc going to last? <laughs> That's what we're all wondering. Like, when is this whole ridiculous Salah, Kuwait, fake marriage arc going to be over? We just want to know, when's it going to be over? When is she going back to Canada? Uh, when is the boredom going to come to an end? We don't know. But I wanted to sit in and uh, react to Melissa Goltero because she's got some really interesting things to say. And I will leave a link for her original video down in the video description. For those of you that have never heard of Melissa Goltero and you want to check out all of her content, and maybe sub up to her channel or leave her a like or a comment and tell her how much you enjoy her content. So without further ado, why don't we just get into the Tarot React? Okay, so let me just bring it up. Always a pleasure to listen to your readings, Melissa. All right, and here we go, y'all. And I like to be a fly on the wall. I see a lot of readers using Halloween themed cards because it's that time of year. Mm -hmm. It's that time of year. <laughs> oh, what a pretty black kitty. I love black cats. My roommate has four of them and I love it. I love the fact that I live in a big house with a lot of animals, four or five cats, one big dog, and then there's Queen Booger in my room. But around here, it's Halloween all year long, so I'm just using my normal. <laughs> ah, this is what it always looks like. Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm a witch. All right. So. Blessed be. How you doing, everyone? If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. If you're new here, welcome to the to the Kaka show. <laughs> it's a hot mess. It's a low budget production. But let's. Um, it's not the Kaka show. Buzz through the blinds. Let's do a quick reading on Chantal. Because I have a feeling this, yeah, I have a feeling someone's going to be walking away really soon. <laughs> that was it. Now, I did a reading right. on Chantal this recently, and that card fan. came up the walking away card. Somebody's going to be walking away from something. And I think Salah, he's been waiting for Chantal to walk away. Maybe if she gets too miserable, maybe if he makes the circumstances too uncomfortable, maybe if he denies her takeout and makes her too angry that she'll just go home. And he just doesn't get it. That Chantal is not one that she's sensible and reasonable. She doesn't have sensible, reasonable thoughts. She doesn't have that thinking process of being sensible and reasonable. She hangs on to things far longer than what she should. And especially when it comes to men, you're a man and you get in her crosshairs and she gets obsessed with you. It's a, it's a wrap. 
She's going to stay obsessed and she's going to hang on until you force her to let go. So he's been operating under the thought of, well, if she just gets too unhappy at some point, she'll just get sick of this whole thing and leave. She won't. She won't. He's been waiting for her to cut the cord. She will not. He's got to do it. And yet he's afraid to do it. I, The last reading that I did on her, I kept picking up this energy of uncertainty. Like he's just uncertain about what to do, where to go when he feels stuck. And what do I do about her? And how do I break away from her? And You got to get some courage somewhere, Salah. You got to find it somewhere. Either you've got to find it or cultivate it or somebody's got to give you some because somebody's got to cut the cord that connects the two of you because she's not going to do it. Your first clue that she was not going to cut the cord, that she was all the way in was when she gave up the Canadian villa and Pete's and the cats and basically gave herself no way back. And the fact that she would use that as leverage. I gave up the villa for you. And I gave up my former life for you. I did all of this for you. Her making sacrifices. Ones that she chose to make. For the sake of getting control and leverage over another person. Because that's how Chantal plays the game. She's not all about that life of sacrificing something because it needs to be done, because it has to be done. It's about I'm going to do it and I'm going to make you feel bad because I made that choice. But let's continue with the reading. Entertainment purposes only. But let's uh, ask the question some card. Uh, ask the questions. Let's ask the cards some questions and see what they have to say. Buzz me in, please, to Chantal. Um... Show me her current energy. Because okay. the other day she was looking pretty happy. Oh, let's see what this is. Okay, okay. Listen, I just pull the cards out and tell you what. I just ask questions, pull cards, and tell you what they, what they mean. So it's the Ten of Cup, which is like us being all happy, emotionally fulfilled, thinking about the future with this person. The Knight of Pentacle. This is an energy that is patient. Um, this could be what she's been waiting for. <sighs> Show me a little more. Why is the... Okay. So the Nine of Pentacle to the side. Um, she could feel like... She could feel like the things that... Salah is now doing shows that he cares. And show me why this came out to the side because this is an independent energy I usually look at. So I feel like this is here for two reasons. One, if she actually sticks to this for more than maybe this 10, I mean, maybe this is 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 months. I don't know. I just felt it, so I said it. Or the nine, right? Like nine weeks, nine months, nine days. I don't know. But, like, she could, the way she feels right now, what I said there, um, Salah and Chantal could feel like if she sticks to this, not only will people actually, they might actually look at her a little differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, just a little differently, uh, but that it could bring some much needed revenue. Um, or this is here on the side because like, how long will she last before one of them decides like, I am not patient enough for this. And this was my last, like, a, this was my like labor of love. This was the last, um, you know, toss, tossing the, the, toss at the dartboard, you know, or whatever, to try to, like, make this work. Um, so show me why this nine of pen, 
tentacles here. Okay, so it's the Wheel of Fortune. This is going to be... What's going to happen? I need more than this because this is like fate, destiny. Um, and I usually say the future is not written. I can say like right, the cards are, are telling me such and such is going to happen in the future. But that it might happen. Mm -hmm. Depends on what people do today that affect tomorrow. What choices are we making today that are going to affect tomorrow? So really, this choice now is, and I. Sorry to stop you, Melissa. You know, Chantal could make a whole new audience if she wanted to. I mean, any content creator could start off doing one kind of content on their channel. And if they decide they don't want to do that kind of content anymore, they're not happy. They're not feeling inspired. They're just not feeling the fire any longer. They can switch it all around. I mean, if you have a YouTube channel, you can do whatever you want with it. So Chantal, for the last eight years, she's done content revolving around food. But excessively so, to the detriment of her health. And she's in a place health-wise where she just can't go on like this. And she's not being smart about it. She's so busy catering to just a small portion of her audience, meaning the feeders, that she's forgetting about the 75% of people in her audience that are not feeders. They are not there to encourage her to eat. They are not there with that food fetish. They just want to talk to her. So on a financial level, it doesn't make sense to cater to the 25% and ignore the 75%. She could take things in a different direction and get herself healthy and make money at the same time and get a whole new audience and rebrand herself. Would it take a lot of work? Would it take a lot of time? Yes and yes. But the potential is there. And I think that's why the Wheel of Fortune card is there. Because the Wheel of Fortune is saying, hey, this wheel can roll wherever you want it to roll. Do you want it to go left? Do you want it to go right? Do you want it to go backwards? Do you want it to go forwards? Do you want it to go sideways? Which way do you want to go? You're controlling the wheel. What influences the wheel is your choices what you choose to do with yourself, how you choose to handle yourself, how you treat others, everything matters. You keep going down a bad road, you keep making bad choices, you're going to stay on a bad path. If you're on a bad path and you know you're on a bad path and you stop right where you are and you go a different way, that's when things will start to get better. I also say this wheel of fortune has to do with the wheel spins, it turns, we cannot control it. No. Nope. But we gotta control ourselves. Right. Oh my gosh. All right. All right, let's see what's what came out. So a five of wands, a five of swords, and it's going to the two of cup. Uh, a king of cup, a seven of sword, and a six of cup. Judgment on the bottom tower, the queen of pentacles. Ooh. Um, Yikes. This is on, <clears throat> I'm, I'm losing my voice because I can't even believe what I'm going to say. <laughs> on the bottom. I mean, I don't know how long this is going to last. But judgment, I mean, this is a person like being reborn. Okay. The tower. This is everything mm -hmm. falling apart. But sometimes we need everything right. to fall apart in order to be rebuilt. I, If you watch my readings, you know 
I, I'm savage compared to like some other readers when it comes to certain cards. Like some readers, they'll be like, oh my gosh, it's the tower. This is awesome, you guys. This is like, you're, you're letting everything go and you're gonna have this new, and when I get it, I'm like, eh. I'm like, this is like something happening that's outside of our control throws us off our foundation when it's representing us as a person. I'm like, you's a hot mess. Mm -hmm. You need to get your cock out together, a person it's representing. Um, you need to build a foundation. Or like if it's representing a connection, it's like it was. It, it never was built on the solid foundation. So the second something happens, like this lightning bolt coming in, it throws everything off. Everyone's like, oh, falling out, oh my God, everything's all out. But it's ending here with the Queen of Pentacles. So this is this is like really in right now. This is in the hands of Chantal. She's now. This is a pivotal moment in Chantal's journey. Mm -hmm. Um this wheel of fortune. So this card being on the side, this nine of pentacle, it's like, this is gonna be the time, the next few weeks or days, hours even for her with this, you know, <laughs> the way it is, minutes. She could be having cravings every like 10, nine to 10 minutes, all right? And that's how it is when you have um, not just with the, you know, when you have issues with certain things and it's like balls deep. Yeah. You, you, you probably, you thinking about it every nine, 10 minutes, maybe even it's, if she, you know, I just want to add this in. So Chantal just got a treadmill and the treadmill is not built to handle her weight. So it might easily break when she gets on it. But let's just say the treadmill does work out, despite the fact that she's well over the max weight. One thing about working out, anybody who's ever worked out before, you're going to get hungry. <laughs> you know, if you're working out, like really working out, uh, it's important to make sure that you are fed well. Chantal, I know you watch my reacts. Just pay attention to what I'm saying. When I see, when I say to you, eat well, eat well does not mean eat massive amounts of junk food. That's not what I'm saying. It's important to eat healthy. You can eat healthy and eat well eating healthy and give your body some real sustenance. But working out or walking on a treadmill as soon as you get done, does not mean a 3,000 calorie meal. Because it takes a long time on a treadmill or even an elliptical bike to burn 3,000 calories, trust me. I mean, get on an elliptical and get on a treadmill and see how long and how much activity it takes you to burn 3,000 calories. And that might be some motivation not to eat so many doggone calories, but I digress. I'm just saying, though, she's a food addict. And she needs to be careful with anything that might stimulate her hunger even further and send it into overdrive. She needs to be on the watch for that. She can like, this is the moment where she's either going to start to rebuild or like, even if it doesn't last, cre create a new version of herself. She might have some breakdowns. I think um, what we've seen already is like part of the breaking, like breaking down to try to be a more stable energy. Or this is saying like she's going to completely fall apart, um, feel like it's over. You know, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I'm just going to just put this out there. 
She is an addict and she has many different addictions, none of which she's going to therapy for or treatment. She's not talking to anybody, even online, because you can do online sessions and anything is better than nothing because it adds to your support system. You need coping mechanisms. You need coping skills. You need coping tools. If you're hyper-focused on something to the point of addiction, you need to find ways to check yourself, to stop yourself, to be aware of yourself, to be aware of those triggers, not ignoring them, not walking past them. Be aware of your triggers. And if you have a self-awareness about them, you can catch yourself and stop yourself from doing something you honestly don't want to do. That's going to make you mad at yourself for doing it later. She has none of that. She could have an entire stocked free gym at her disposal that nobody is using except her. A gym that's open 24 hours a day. Every single piece of equipment relates to something physical, to the physical body. But nothing in that gym is addressing what's going on inside of her. The mental, the emotional, that's what the therapy is all about. Because does she need to lose weight? Absolutely. The fact that she is so heavy, and she's five feet tall, and she's supposed to be about 110, 115 pounds, and she is 400 plus pounds overweight. It's the reason why she's having so many issues. Her, her tiny frame, her skeleton can't support that much body mass. It just can't. But all of the working out in the world, you're not fixing the mind. You're not fixing the emotions. That needs to be healed and repaired as well. That needs to be of as much importance as getting on a treadmill 30 minutes a day. Because if your mind isn't right, then your body is not going to be right or it's not going to stay right. You're going to fall off the tracks quick. It's going to start with, oh, I worked out yesterday. I can do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes. And then you're like, oh, well, I'm still hurting from my workout. I can put it off another day. And the next thing you know, you're not working out at all. And the same thing applies to the diet. Oh, I ate healthy the other day. I can treat myself to a pizza. I can treat this as my cheat day. And the next thing you know, you had a whole month of cheat days. You got to learn discipline and structure. You've got to have those coping skills and coping mechanisms. You've got to have some kind of support system to help keep you on track. She doesn't have any of that. She doesn't know how to deal with her problems or her addictions and neither does Salah. So this whole thing is doomed to fail because she knows what she needs to do. She's not doing it. And Salah, he has no clue how severe all this stuff is. Like, why even bother? Uh, everything is crumbling between the relationship. Um, everything I tried to build here in Kuwait and maybe go home to her mother. Because for me, this is like the mother energy. And like, I've explained why, like in other readings, if you're new here, sorry. Yeah, Chantal, people asked her in the chat recently if she was going home to her family on Christmas. And she said, no, I'm not going back. I think she is. I think if she'll go back to Canada, if for no other reason, because she wants to partake of the green and she wants to get the free gifts from the family. For some reason, it's very important for her to get free stuff from the family. So like the security, the person that represents the nurturing and the security, stability. Okay. So, um, yeah, I feel like, 
I definitely think now when you see like a five of sword, it's like, oh, an argument or the five of wands. It's like, oh, people not working with us. But when you, sometimes when you get them like this, like next to each other and it's like a 10 together, it makes a 10. It's like a completion. So I don't know if this is saying like right now, Chantal is playing along. She doesn't want to argue or fight. She doesn't want to lose this relationship with Hansmith's husband. Whatever it is, okay? I just did a reading yesterday. I said what I said. Like, the Hierophant came up for them. So whatever, whether it's an actual legal, you know, connection or just something that... Mm, you know, the other day in my reading, I said there was something that Salah might have on Chantal that he kind of threatened her with in order. It, like, you're going to, you're going to, Chantal, you're going to do the, 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 take control of your destiny. I think I know what he might be threatening her with. Because what could he threaten Chantal with that would get her attention? Well, the fact that in Kuwait, she has a place to stay. But in Canada, she doesn't. I mean, I, I can't think of anything else that would make her shake in her Timu shoes other than the fact that she's desperate to hang on to Salah, not because she loves him, not because she thinks that we're all buying the fake marriage thing, because she has nowhere else to go. If she went back home to Canada, her family is not going to let her live in their house full time. No. She's got sloppy, disgusting ways. They can't trust her to leave her at the house. She'll turn the whole place into a recording studio and dox everybody. It's because she doesn't have the money nor the means to get a place of her own in Canada. And we saw her in Thailand. She literally cannot function on her own. She feels lost when she has to function on her own. Can, would Pete move in with her? Yeah. But would he? I don't know. But she doesn't have the six, seven, eight thousand dollars it would take to move into a place of her own. And she's got bad credit and she's got bankruptcies on her record and the landlords don't take too kindly to that. So she might even need more money than that to move into a one bedroom. You know, like she has a place in Kuwait, but for her to go back to her home country and get a place would be extremely difficult given the fact that she, she just hasn't repaired things financially that she could. She put herself in a bad spot. So he, they might have had a conversation of, you're going to get in shape. You're going to lose the weight. So we can go travel so you can do things or else, or else I'm going to pull the lease. Whoever's name is on that lease, they'll pull it. And then she'll have to go back home and she has no place to say. So maybe holding that over her head got her attention for now. Unless you want to be a single energy, um, it could have to do with everyone's assumptions about the marriage. Maybe that's why that card came out and I wasn't seeing it. You know what I mean? Yesterday. Um, that's, that's, that could be what it was. I was so overwhelmed by the other crap I saw that I had to scrub my eyes afterwards. <laughs> now, I do feel like, so this King of Cup, so I feel like, the affections, the emotion, like Chantal takes uh, the way that Salah wants to control things as being noble, as him being, wow, you've been, you've been, so, Manchetti, you've been so patient. Um, you know, it's like, she's like, oh, he's so controlling and that is love. No, Chantal. I'm just going to be blunt. I'm going to be real blunt. Chantal, you are his pay pig. You are his cash cow. 
You are where he gets the pork and the milk. You keep him fed. Because of you paying the rent on the villa, he can say that he has a nice villa that you pay for. He sees your health getting worse. He sees your mobility getting worse. Your breathing is bad. And because you are the pay pig and the cash cow and whatever it is you're doing for him financially, he doesn't want that to end all of a sudden. He might be looking at you thinking, this chick is one cheeseburger away from a heart attack. And I don't want my piggy bank to break. So we got to do something about this. We, we got to get control of this because another few months and she's going to be bed bound and then she's going to be a problem and a burden. And I don't want that. He likes the money, but he doesn't want you to become a burden. He doesn't want you bed bound. And he knows that things have reached a critical point where you are so close to bed bound, it's scary. So to keep the money rolling in, he's taking control and he's getting the treadmill and he wants you to exercise and he wants you to eat right and lose some of the weight. So there's lesser chance of a heart attack or a stroke. Because if something happens to you, well, then something happens to him too. No more Oceanside Villa. No more paid vacations, no more paychecks. It's not about loving you. It's about protecting the money that you give him and, and making sure that that continues. He's so patient with me. But really, this I feel like he's using... He's manipulating... Yep. By... by like... Acting like he cares. I think this will bring more attention to her in a more positive way. Like if she actually... Now, I will say this. If you're on a health journey or have issues with whatever, whether it's health issues like she has or not, don't listen to her about food. No. no. She, she's, she doesn't know one thing about what's healthy portion size, what should be mixed with nope. things. When you have gut issues, you shouldn't be having tons of spices or mixing lots of different foods even. Your your stomach has to break that down. As a matter of fact, if you have serious like stomach issues, you should be eating things that are easy to digest. And yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but if you know how to read, go read, please. I mean, it doesn't take much to, like, educate yourself. Um, whether you have doctors telling you whatever or not, I don't care. Go research things for yourself. Empower yourself, please. And the seven of swords, you know, they could be a liar, a sneak, a thief. And the six of cups is all about the memories that we've we either have already made or, like, I feel like this is a lot like Chantal, I want you to be around for a long, long time. I mm, I love you. I know you're sneaky and you, you snuck into the freezer and ate all my ice cream sandwiches. Mm, I forgive you. I forgive you. Hey, hey, Chantal, did you see? Chantal. Yes, Mom, Sherry. Did you see? Amberlynn and Tommy's Instagram. <laughs> no, no, Monchetti. What? What? You watching them? What? No, 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 no. Of course not. <laughs> uh, I hate American women. <laughs> no. <laughs> Chantal, did you see on Amberlynn's channel what they did do with that fruit to roll up? With the ice cream? What? Um, dear, no. Well, why, handsome husband, Monsieur? What are you thinking? Oh, ho, ho. I think you know exactly what I'm saying, son. No, TMI. <laughs> what? Uh, if you are very good and control yourself, <laughs> maybe that extra 
splurgy treat you we have for the week and will be a fruit to roll up with the ice cream sandwich uh, rolled up in it if you know what i mean <laughs> no comment <laughs> I didn't know we were going to have tarot theater, but I like it. Let's make memories. Woo! <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's get drunk and make memories. Let's celebrate. All right. So that's what I'm seeing there. What is he doing? Is he like basically using the whole reward system to motivate her, telling her that if she passes certain points, that he'll give her something, maybe her favorite food or whatever, just to keep her motivated. You know, doing the carrot on a stick in front of the donkey thing. Maybe. Uh, um, it's a general reading for entertainment purposes only. If I didn't mention, if you didn't get that. From this. I really think they would do that, though. I don't know. I feel like they definitely watch Anne Boleyn, and I'm sure they're curious about that for roll-up and what was going like, on. Uh, or maybe Salop, you know, he looks around on YouTube and he might be seeing the attention that Amberlynn Reed and Tommy are getting, although there's there's some negative attention there. We know what Tommy is and what she's done and her past relationship. But maybe he's thinking, oh, if we portray ourselves as a loving couple, uh, we might get some views. I don't know. I don't know what his motivation is. All right, guys. Um... If you want to support what I do here and you're not already, consider subscribing. Um, if you want to request certain type of readings or help me out in the algorithm that you have really nothing to say, you can leave a heart emoji or, you know, make a request of a certain Zodiac um, based reading. You want to see, I'm going to do Scorpio. Okay. Really excellent reading, Melissa. Really excellent reading. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I appreciated the tarot theater. Absolutely. So that's it for this react, y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe. And please look down below in the description for the link for Melissa Gold Tarot's uh, video link. Check out her channel and all of her content. And I thank you guys for being here. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.